Let's create a cluster bomb. The cluster bomb will send out additional bombs with the initial explosion. Um, this bomb you're seeing right now is one we created in a previous playlist, and the link to that is in the description below. Let's go to our prefabs folder and make sure you have that initial bomb prefab in that folder, and so we can delete it from the scene. Let's duplicate that bomb prefab. Let's rename this one uh, cluster bomb. Okay, let's go to our scripts. Let's duplicate this explosion script and let's rename it to cluster explosion. One thing you gotta be careful about is when you, you have to, when you duplicate a script that has the same reference to this script. So you need to change the class reference to whatever you named it, um, that second script. And I named it cluster explosion so all the errors went away because I capitalized everything and spelled it correctly. As you can see, the error went away. If we go to our prefabs, let's just already go into the cluster bomb. Let's lock it and make sure we drag in our cluster script onto the game object instead of this explosion one. So let's remove this one, remove component, and add our cluster explosion. There's a couple fields we need to populate. This bomb field, which is our bomb game object. Uh, we can go to the prefabs folder and drag in cluster bomb. We can then go to our particle pack where we got the effect from in the fire explosions folder in their prefabs folder. Big explosion and drag that in. Let's go back to our scripts folder and go into cluster explosion. Okay, let's think about really quick what we want to create. We want to have three additional bombs get added when it explodes, and then we want those bombs to get sent off by the explosion effect. This is our explosion right here, uh, the explosion force, and this is our um, visual fire effect. So let's, let's just copy this line right here. And instead of adding another explosion effect, let's add our bomb game object right here. Make sure it's highlighted and type bomb. If we see what that does for us, we uh, we can go ahead, go to prefabs, make sure it's your prefab folder, drag in cluster bomb, and let's drag it over a little bit. Let's also change the ground to, oh, I need to unlock this. Let's change the ground to 10 in the X and 10 in the Z. Let's hit play. Okay, awesome, it added, it instantiated another bomb that's going off. So this effect is already coming together. All right, let's continue adding in our other bombs. And we're gonna want, we don't want it to be the exact same position of our initial bomb. So actually, before we add the bombs, let's change our position. Um, let's add a new vector three. So new vector three is going to be looking for three different positions in X, Y, and the Z. And we can do transform position dot X for the first one. And then you can copy paste this to get the second and third one. But we want a Y here and a Z here. Let's go back to Unity and get oriented with our directions. Y is up, uh, X is right, and Z is in and back. Now that we got oriented with our directions, we want the bombs to uh, start a little bit above our initial explosion. So let's go ahead and plus the Y direction by one uh, float. And then let's add in our two other bombs. Okay, now these three bombs are going to start at our same position, and we don't want that to happen because they'll probably get sent the same direction, or it will look weird. I don't know. You can test it out, see if that's the desired effect that you want. But right now, I'm going to just add a plus one to the Z over here. And then the next line down, I'm going to do it to the X, and then I'm going to do the next one a minus one F. So right now, this is kind of looking like a triangle. If we do a negative 0.5F on both of these lines, it will be more, will be more symmetrical. 
A word of caution, don't have your bombs keep looping forever because you don't want to put that type of strain on your computer. All right, let's go back to Unity and see what this result gives us. Cluster bomb is already in our scene. I'm dragging it in earlier. If we hit play, cool. That's a pretty awesome effect. If you think the bombs go too early, you can always um, put it after or make the explosion bigger so that the bombs actually start in the explosion. And I'm going to turn this off before my PC blows up. If it didn't already. Woo, that's a close one. <laughs> <laughs> so right now the bomb is it's on a continual loop where it keeps creating this cluster bomb effect. And uh, there's a pretty easy fix to it, but uh, it's, it's kind of funny, it's kind of awesome. Um, let's go ahead and fix it. And this is uh, one of the reasons why you, you always want to create something new when you're going for a new effect. If we, instead of dragging in cluster bomb here, if we drag in the bomb prefab, that has that other script. It should just blow up once. Awesome, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, learned some things about instantiation and creating a cluster bomb. So on the energy explosion, I didn't turn off looping. That's why they're continuing to explode. And that energy explosion is kind of a little wussy against the white background and it's small. All right, I'm gonna try one more. I wanna do this goop effect. Let's drag in goop effect. I don't know what the goop effect is, but we'll see what it looks like. I don't know if that's uh, playing exactly how it's supposed to, but uh, it's kind of a lame effect. You guys can just mess around with this stuff. Just real quick, I created this block tower script that you can find on the blog post to this channel, which is also in the link in the description. But uh, as they're going to create blocks on top of each other, on top of these other blocks, and I want to see what this does. Ooh. All right, the towers are building. They're going to get knocked down. Cool. The launches, I also boosted the power bit on the bombs. Wow, some of these are pretty sturdy because they've got so much weight on them, but there they all go. They're just going. Oh, that's cool.